Commander Anyasorea paused the holographic display mid-battle. Ancient Earth soldiers, dressed in crude camouflage, crawled through mud, a far cry from the gleaming starfighters of the Confederation fleet. Kinetic projectile weaponry, she lectured the half-filled auditorium. Crude but brutally efficient, these human rifles lobbed metal at velocities that could pierce shields designed for early energy weapons. A ripple of soft hisses and murmurs filled the room, the universal alien sound of mild discomfort. Only a handful of xenoanthropology enthusiasts in the audience actually looked engaged. Of course, Anya continued, such tactics are obsolete in the modern age. Their reliance on attrition warfare speaks to a, she hesitated, searching for the right word, a less evolved strategic mindset. The term hung in the air, followed by polite coughs. Anya knew the implied insult. The Galactic Confederation, built on principles of cooperation and advanced shield technology, viewed warfare as a precise, almost surgical act. Humans, with their lingering fondness for guns and bombs, were seen as relics of a more barbaric time. Anya didn't necessarily disagree. She, like most humans, served in a support capacity for the Confederation. Medicine, engineering, disaster relief tasks deemed fitting for those accustomed to a world plagued by hardship. They were the bandages and the bomb, applied after the Confederation's gleaming ships, ensured a swift victory. Thank you, Commander. A Zillatan diplomat, with his smooth, iridescent scales and perpetually polite smile, rose to dismiss the class. A fascinating historical perspective. The students dispersed, not with curiosity, but with a touch of pity, as if the human commander was a museum exhibit, a testament to a past best forgotten. Anya strode the pristine corridors of the Confederation flagship, the Harmony, usually a source of pride. Now, the polished alloy walls seemed a flimsy illusion. News broadcasts, once filled with trade agreements and cultural exchanges, pulsed with panic. A new enemy, shrouded in a signal-disrupting energy field, rendered Confederation shields worthless. Five systems lost in a week, Anya muttered. Their swift, surgical warfare was no match for an enemy against whom shields were no more protection than tissue paper. Commander Soria, she turned to find a comms officer, an avian creature with feathers ruffled in distress, rushing towards her. Priority transmission. High Council Member Valara insists. It's for you personally. Valara, one of the most influential diplomats, known for a condescending benevolence towards humanity. Not a good sign. Anya braced herself and nodded. The transmission materialized in her private quarters, a stark contrast to the chaos beyond. Valara's usually impeccable scales were marred with dust, his voice no longer smooth, but ragged. Commander, I, a miscalculation has been made, a grave one. Pride flared in Anya for a shameful moment. Regarding shield-disrupting technology, she'd raised the theoretical possibility months ago, only to be met with polite dismissal. Yes, and more. Valara's scaled brow furrowed. In shielding our younger allies, we've stunted their tactical growth. They lack the desperation that fosters unconventional solutions. And humanity, as always, is synonymous with unconventional, Anya said, unable to completely hide her bitterness. Indeed. Valara swallowed, as if the word left a bad taste. We require your particular experience, Commander. It wasn't a celebration. Stepping into the Confederation War Room wasn't a victorious march, but a funeral procession. Once proud faces of a dozen alien races were drawn, marked with a strain of sleepless nights and shattered hope. The central holo display showed not charts of strategic maneuvers, but live feeds of worlds burning. Velada, the picture of composure only days ago, merely nodded at Anya's entrance. You understand the situation, We've exhausted our conventional, he winced at the word, tactics. Anya surveyed the room. Some recoiled slightly from her gaze, old prejudice lingering. Others held a desperate curiosity, like survivors turning to a stranger clutching a tattered map. My analysis, Anya began, not bothering with pleasantries, your shielding isn't just useless, it's a liability. 
creates a false sense of security your soldiers never learned to fight without. A ripple of gasps, she overrode them bluntly. Your weapons are designed for post-shield neutralization. Against this enemy, they're about as effective as targeting lasers for a forest fire. Then what? A reptilian general snarled, a flicker of the old disdain returning. Do those guns of yours offer more bandages for the dead? Anya held his gaze. A chance. We'll hold the line. By time until, she hesitated, the full weight of her next words settling on her shoulders. Until you relearn the meaning of war. The words echoed in the deathly silence that followed. Panic had a smell, Anya had learned, that acrid mix of sweat and frantic circuits that clung to the Harmony's bridge despite its pristine appearance. She watched not the enemy sensor readings, but the faces the clenched talons of an avian navigator, the way a starfish-shaped comms officer's tendrils twitched with barely controlled anxiety. Commander, the comms officer's voice warbled with stress. They've bypassed our defense line. Civilian convoy on planet Rylax, they're sitting ducks. Valara's antennae drooped lower. Evacuation ships won't reach them in time. We have no fighters that can. We send ground troops, Anya interrupted, her voice flat, cutting through the chaos. Small scale, rapid deployment. Get those civilians out. To what end? Valara whirled on her. Throw lives away. Humans may cling to outdated notions of sacrifice, but... To buy you time, Anya countered. Her heart wasn't stone, but panic was a luxury they couldn't afford. This isn't about brute force. We sow enough chaos, draw their attention, give your scientists breathing room to adapt. With what weapons, a scaled admiral scoffed. You'll need an orbital strike to even scratch those ships. Anya's smile was grim. That's the good news, admiral. Our guns fire metal, not pretty lights, and last I checked. Your armories are full of decommissioned kinetic weaponry. Obsolete toys for the humans, but against an enemy like this? The room was silent, not in agreement, but in dawning, desperate comprehension. It wasn't the sleek dropships Anya was used to. The transport was utilitarian, all hard edges and rumbling engines, the kind used to haul heavy machinery on frontier settlements. Inside, the human soldiers were crammed knee to knee, the air thick with tension and the stale scent of recycled oxygen. Sergeant Kaiden, a veteran with a face etched with old campaigns, not bravado, was running a final weapons check. Ma'am, he addressed Anya, I have to say, never thought I'd miss firing a real slug thrower. Railgun, Sergeant, Anya corrected, less kickback than your antique rifles. Same principle, ma'am. Sometimes, simple is best. Kaiden's mouth twitched into a semblance of a smile. The rest of the squad was a mixed Chen, the tech whiz who could barely sit still, his eyes gleaming with a mix of fear and morbid excitement. Torres, the medic, already had that haunted look of someone bracing for the pain she couldn't prevent. A flicker on the display drew Anya's attention. A civilian family two scaled Trellian parents, their youngling wide-eyed with terror, her job was the overview, the strategy, but in that moment, Anya felt not the cold logic of a commander, but a sickening twist of guilt. This was the desperation she was thrusting her people into. Incoming, Kaiden's yell jolted her back to the present. The transport shuddered as they dropped into the atmosphere, the sky swirling with enemy fighters. No fancy shield, people, Kaiden's voice barked over the comms but that also means those bastards can't see us coming until it's too late. We hit hard, we hit fast, and we get out of there. Understood? A chorus of affirmatives, none of them sounding particularly confident. Anya locked eyes with the sergeant. Sergeant, let's just make sure we don't become another museum exhibit beside those rifles of yours. Rylax wasn't a battlefield, it was a panicked anthill. Civilians scurried through the streets, some dragging possessions, others wailing towards the promised safety of the overstretched evac zone. It was into this mayhem that Anya's squad dropped, not in some glorious charge, but disgorged unceremoniously in a back alley. Chen, Kaiden snapped. Jam their comms. 
Give us five minutes of blindness, and we might pull this off. The tech whiz was out the hatch, a blur of motion towards a nearby calm relay. Anya, meanwhile, grabbed Torres by the shoulder. Casualty point, she pointed to a half-demolished market stall, still miraculously stocked with supplies. We need to be ready for the worst. The city wasn't silent. Screams pierced the air, the low rumble of the enemy ships a constant, dreadful hum. Anya scanned rooftops, windows, anywhere a sniper might nest. Not sleek lasers, but a hunting scope. Every primitive war movie she'd scoffed at suddenly became a tactical manual. Then, a flicker not a blast, but a distortion in the air as an enemy craft uncloaked. Too close. Hit the dirt, Kaiden roared, but he was too late. The beam raked across the alley, not the killing blast they feared, but something worse. Anya felt her legs buckle, muscles seizing, her rifle clattering uselessly. Paralysis. Chen, what the hell, Kaiden gasped, his own body contorting in a grotesque parody of a dance. Nerve, jammer, Chen grunted, fingers desperately flying over a control pad. The enemy ship, revealed, swiveled towards the source of the disruption. This was the chaos they were counting on. Taurus, go, and you forced the words out. The medic, unaffected by the nerve weapon, scrambled from cover, sprinting towards civilians frozen in place. Dragging a screaming child behind her, she darted back under Anya's pained gaze. The paralysis broke. Anya hoisted her rifle, but the ship was already targeting Chen. No time for aimed shots. She fired a burst at the ship's engines, the recoil jarring her numbed arms. Metal screamed as the craft sputtered, not downed, but wounded. Just enough. Kaiden scrambled to his feet. Move, move, he bellowed herding his troops back towards the transport. As Anya turned to follow, she saw it. A flash of movement on a rooftop and enemy sniper, zeroing in on the fleeing civilians. A blast of ancient gunfire echoed, and the sniper simply crumpled. Torres, rifle in hand, eyes wide with a mix of horror and grim determination. Some lessons are learned quickly in the crucible of war. The Harmony's medbay was not the sterile haven it should have been. Wounded soldiers moaned, the air acrid with the smell of seared flesh, of hastily applied battlefield medicine. Anya stood by the observation window, watching Torres work with swift, bloody hands. We can't keep this up, Valara's voice was strained, none of his usual diplomatic polish remaining. Every civilian we save cost us three of yours. This, this is not sustainable. It never was, Anya replied flatly but it's what we can do, right now. She kept her eyes on Torres, the medic now bandaging a wounded Zillaton civilian. The fear in the iridescent scales was still there, but with a flicker of something else. Respect? Gratitude? It didn't matter. And Chen? Will your scrambler work on their capital ships? Buy us the time we need, Valara pressed. Unlikely, Anya admitted. Their disruption tech is generations ahead of ours on a good day. A heavy silence descended. It was Valara who broke it, his voice barely a whisper. Humans, you were never meant to be saviors. Our protection, he choked off the sentence, the realization dawning. Anya turned from the med bay window, finally facing the Zillaton. Not protection, Velada. Complacency. You grew soft, relied on tech that was never fail-safe. Her eyes narrowed. It made you blind to the real cost of war, a price my people have always known. They were interrupted by a commotion. Enya whirled, fearing another attack, but it was Sergeant Kaiden, his usually stern face twisted in anger. Ma'am, he gritted out, words spreading about the enemy's nerve jammers. Those bastards out there, they're targeting families, putting kids in the line of fire to draw us out. He slammed a fist against the wall, leaving a bloody smear. The coldness washed over Anya. It wasn't tactical logic this time, but pure, burning rage. Get me a map of the city, she said, her voice dangerously low. It's time we play by their rules. The market square was a scene out of a forgotten nightmare. Makeshift barricades of toppled stalls barely held back the crush of terrified people, their combined wails a chilling chorus. 
Anya's squad crouched behind crumbling stonework, not soldiers now, but hunters stalking monstrous prey. See the pattern? Anya rasped to Kaiden. They're hurting the civilians. Too neat to be panic. Kaiden scanned the square, his eyes narrowing. Forcing them into a kill zone. But where? The rooftops are clear. Then he spotted it a tremor in the air above the central fountain, a telltale sign of a cloaked ship. Up there, he mouthed, pointing. To open a shot, Anya hissed. Chen, we go loud. Draw their attention. The tech whiz nodded grimly, pulling a crude device from his pack. Electromagnetic pulse, short range. Knock out the ship's targeting and make them notice us. Taurus, bait, Anya said, her voice devoid of emotion. The medic paled but didn't question. It was a monstrous tactic, but a necessary cruelty. Chen triggered the pulse. A wave of energy rippled through the square, screens flickered, a confused pause descended. Then, high above, the enemy ship pulsed into visibility, swiveling frantically to find the source of the disruption. At the same moment, Taurus sprinted from cover, dragging a wailing Trellian child behind her. No, Kaiden barked involuntarily. Anya held him back. The ship's weapons lit up, searing beams aimed straight for the medic. Then, the fountains exploded in a shower of debris. The railgun slug tore through stone and water, slamming into the ship's underbelly. A lucky shot. A desperate one. The craft sputtered, listing towards Anya's position. Now, she roared. Her squad unleashed a hail of gunfire, not to bring down the ship, but to blind it, to force it down. The ship crashed into the square, a screeching mass of metal, showering sparks. Anya's squad scrambled into the wreckage before it fully ignited. And there, amidst the alien tech, they found the nerve jammer. A sleek device, humming malevolently. Kaiden smashed it with the butt of his rifle, again and again, until it was a mangled ruin. When he finally stood, breathing heavy, his eyes were haunted. We're becoming the monsters, to fight the monsters. Anya closed her eyes briefly. Maybe... But those civilians, she gestured towards the square, now ominously quiet. A few more moments and... She didn't finish the sentence. No one did. The Harmony's war room pulsed with a different kind of energy. Instead of despair, there was a flicker of defiant hope. Analysts pored over data, a cacophony of alien voices raised not in panic, but in frantic strategizing. Valara approached Anya, his scales less dusty his steps firmer. Your tactics, he began, then cleared his throat. Your unconventional solutions have bought us time. Our scientists have reverse-engineered your projectile technology. Kinetic weapons are being integrated into fighter craft as we speak. Anya merely nodded. She'd seen the prototype's sleek fighters with cannons protruding like grotesque insectoid limbs. How long? Days, perhaps. Valara's antennae twitched. Long enough for your people to instruct ours. The magnitude of that statement hung heavy in the air. Anya's soldiers, grizzled and wounded, were now not fighters, but teachers, passing on the grim knowledge of frontline desperation. And after? Anya knew there was no gentle way of asking. After? Valara echoed, and for the first time, his voice held a touch of iron. We repay the debt. Humanity will no longer be relegated to the sidelines. This war will be fought and won side by side. It wasn't the glorious welcome into a warrior brotherhood that some of her people might crave. It was necessity forged in the crucible of shared despair. A screen flared to life, a battlefield transmission from Rylax. Human and alien soldiers fought together now, clumsily at first, but learning with each fallen comrade in the foreground, she saw young Tira, the Trellian child, no longer wide-eyed with terror, but handing out makeshift bandages with a determined frown. Anya felt a pang, not of pride, but the burden of responsibility. Her victory was teaching others how to bleed. The battle for Rylax became legend, not through heroic songs the wailing cries of the enemy ships as they fell to kinetic weapons didn't translate well to ballads but in the manuals every Confederation soldier now poured over. The human primer it was called, 
with diagrams of makeshift booby traps, the importance of aimed shots even under fire, and a chilling section titled When the Medics Fall. Anya wasn't present for the final liberation. Promoted now to tactical advisor, she moved between Harmony and a dozen other desperate systems, a ghost haunting command centers. The war was turning, slowly and at a terrible cost. Instead of victory parades, there were funerals. Anya attended one on a barren moon hastily converted into a graveyard. Humans lay alongside Zillitans and scaled Rylorians and a dozen others. Taurus, promoted to field medic lead, stood by her side. Both of them haunted far beyond their years. It gets easier, a veteran Zillitan commander said to her gruffly, gesturing at the endless rows of markers. The scales around his eyes were permanently scarred, etched with the memory of his soldiers paralyzed, screaming under enemy fire. Anya said nothing, unsure if it was a lie or merely the grim determination needed to survive. As they turned to leave, she noticed a small figure by a freshly dug grave. Tira, older now, wearing not the robes of a civilian, but the crude beginnings of a soldier's uniform. The child, now a young woman, didn't approach Anya with the adoration of a rescued victim, but with the wary respect of a fellow warrior. Tara offered a salute, not the crisp gesture of the Confederation military, but something Rauer learned on a battlefield. Anya returned it, a silent acknowledgement of the grim kinship they shared. Perhaps this was the true HFY moment, not in the cheers of victory, but in the shared silence of loss. The war didn't end in glorious surrender. The enemy, facing an unexpected resurgence of viciousness, retreated, not out of defeat, but a cold calculation of losses. Anya stood in the Harmony's command center as the news spread, not through jubilant cheers, but a weary, bone-deep relief. Valara approached her, still bearing the scars of the past years, but his voice was strong. It is over, because of you, Commander and urged to deflect Rose in Anya's throat. Yet, she merely inclined her head. It is never one person, Valara. Perhaps, he conceded, yet, you forced us to look beyond our shields, both literal and metaphorical. The Confederation has been reborn in a trial by fire. Anya spared a glance at the tactical map. Systems still flickered red wounds that would take generations to heal. We carry a new burden now, Velara, she said quietly. The knowledge of just how cruel war truly is. We cannot become what we fought against. We will not, Velara's voice held an echo of those desperate early days. Yet neither shall we turn our backs on those in need ever again. I intend to propose a bill a permanent coalition of defense, with humanity at its heart. He gave a wry smile that didn't quite reach his eyes. Of course, it will take years of debate to make it official, but I have learned some lessons in unconventional tactics myself. Anya let herself give a small nod of approval. Bureaucracy may always win in the end, but for now, it was enough that the intention was there. I will hold you to that, Valara. Her gaze shifted from the map to the viewport, gazing out at stars no longer obscured by enemy ships. Peace was a fragile thing, a fleeting moment to catch her breath between battles. The weight humanity now carried would lighten with time, but never disappear entirely. It was the price they paid, not for superiority, but for simple, brutal survival. Celebrations on earth were muted. Street parades intermingled with solemn memorials, fireworks lost against the backdrop of hastily rebuilt cities. Anya, granted the hastily invented title of Protector of the Coalition, stood on a podium overlooking the crowds, an unfamiliar wave of unease washing over her. They wanted a hero. She could offer them only a tired survivor. Anya's speech went through the motion's unity, sacrifice, the promise to always stand watch. Then, she veered from the prepared script. We did not win, she said, voice ringing clear. We endured. There's no glory in that, only the grim knowledge that we have the stomach for things the rest of the coalition prayed they would never see. Uneasy murmurs rippled through the crowd. A zillitan diplomat on the stage behind her fidgeted, eyes darting towards an aide holding the approved version of Anya's address. But Anya was done with polite speeches. We humans, she continued, 
the words feeling heavy on her tongue, were the calloused hands in the dark, fumbling for the right weapon. We are the voice shouting a warning that no one wants to hear. She saw faces shift, not adoration, but a dawning comprehension. Chen's parents beamed up at her with pride dampened by worry. Kaiden, standing off to the side, had the thousand-yard stare of someone still seeing ghosts. Torres was absent, on some frontier world already responding to another flare-up of conflict. You want the HFY, humanity at its finest? Anya challenged the crowd. That's not parades, it's orphans learning to hold rifles, it's ancient lullabies replaced by the rattle of gunfire. We have become what we had to become. Her voice broke slightly, the control slipping. And pray we never have to become it again. The silence that followed wasn't the cheers she expected. People stared up at her, alien and human side by side, seeing not a hero to worship, but a scarred reflection of themselves. And then, slowly, it began. Not applause, but the clatter of metal on pavement. Kaiden dropped his medals, and another, and another, until a pile of once treasured honors shimmered in the afternoon light. Anya unpinned her own, letting them fall with a clatter. It was then a cheer rose, not in celebration, but in shared, weary defiance. The bar was a forgotten relic tucked away in the old town sector. No gleaming chrome and holographic menus, just worn wood and the scent of a hundred spilled beers. Anya slumped in a corner booth, a glass of amber liquid untouched in front of her. Hiding. She jolted, then scowled at the figure sliding into the opposite seat. Valara, somehow looking even more disheveled in his ill-fitting civilian clothes. Thought the grand diplomat might be schmoozing, Anya grunted. One can only tolerate so many speeches about unwavering optimism. Valara's scales gleamed faintly in the dim light. He signaled the bartender, and moments later, a glass of something vividly green appeared in front of him. Trellian fire blossom liqueur. Guaranteed to either cheer you up or knock you out. Neither sounds unappealing. Anya eyed the drink, then took a swig of her own. Rough day. Every day is, Valara admitted. He surveyed the bar's clientele, a mix of tired dock workers, a few soldiers on leave, their laughter a bit too loud. The coalition of defense passes with overwhelming support, of course. Everyone wants a protector, less keen on picking up the damned sword themselves. A bitter laugh escaped Anya. We're the monster under the bed, Valara. Useful when there's a real threat, but shoved back into the shadows when the lights come on. Perhaps for a while, Valara conceded. But even the most pampered child eventually outgrows their fear of the dark. He took a careful sip of the Trellian liqueur and winced. Change is coming, Anya. Slower than I'd like, but the gears are finally turning. Humans in every fleet, every outpost, Anya mused. Not as battlefield medics, but warriors. And teachers, Valara added quietly. This grim practicality of yours, it must be ingrained in the next generation. I've seen the proposal's mandatory survival courses in the academies, combat simulations so brutal they make our old sterile exercises look like child's play. They'll hate us, Anya said, no pride in her voice, only a quiet sadness. And they'll thank us, Valara countered, when the next threat doesn't catch them blissfully unaware. The silence stretched, broken only by the clinking of glasses and distant murmurs of half-heard conversations. The academy was more like a boot camp than the gleaming halls of learning Anya remembered. Mud splattered, shouting cadets stumbled through an obstacle course, a trillion drill instructor barking orders with a vicious glee that would have made Kaiden proud. Valara grimaced. Intense. Effective, Anya replied, her eyes fixed on a cadet a young human woman barely out of her teens, pushing through the punishing exercise with stubborn determination. They don't just learn to fire a gun, but to dig a trench, to stitch a wound under fire, to carry their fallen comrade out while the enemy's still breathing. And you teach them to hate, Valara said, a hint of accusation in his scaled brow. Anya met his eyes. No, I teach them the meaning of never again. The enemy out there, they don't hate, they calculate. We can't fight calculation with sentiment, with parades and pretty speeches. 
We fight it with a cold understanding that war takes more than courage. It takes an intimate knowledge of all its ugliness. She watched the young cadet collapse at the finish line, panting and triumphant, then help another, an alien who'd faltered, to their feet. I teach them that even in the worst of it, the humanity part, that means not letting go of your comrade's hand. Falara followed her gaze, a dawning understanding settling on him. A terrible burden, he murmured. One they didn't ask for, Anya sighed, but someone has to carry it. The instructor's voice boomed across the field, ordering the cadets to fall into formation. Humans and Zillitans, scaled Rylorians and a dozen others, stood at attention together, not as separate races, but as a single weary unit. Can you guarantee this? Valara gestured to the scene. This forced unity will never turn outward. That the protector will not become the tyrant? It was the question that always lingered. Anya, too, had watched history unfold, seen how power corrupts. No, she admitted, but I can teach them to question, to disobey orders if they must. Just like you questioned the old ways, Valara. A rebellion born in a battlefield, Valara mused, a wry twist to his mouth. Before Anya could respond, a calm officer scurried over, halting before them. Commander Soria, urgent transmission from the frontier, he stammered. There's an unidentified energy signature. It resembles the old enemy. The Harmony's war room wasn't a place of panic anymore. It was a honed machine, the tension thrumming beneath the calm. Faces Anya had seen break, now creased with resolve. Valara stood at her side, not as a diplomat, but as co-commander. Confirmation, Anya barked, the informalities of peacetime stripped away. Partial, ma'am. A young analyst replied, barely a tremble in her voice. The energy signature, it's similar, but also scrambled. More. Cautious. Adapted, Valara hissed. They've learned. Anya closed her eyes briefly, the weight settling on her shoulders once more. Evac orders to frontier systems. Mobilize the fleets, but defensive positions only. We don't charge in blind this time. Orders were relayed at a speed that would have been considered utter chaos just a few years ago. Now, it was a brutal efficiency forged in the fires of the last war. Chen, Anya addressed her former comms whiz, now head of countermeasures. Can you disrupt their signal scrambling? I can try. Ma'am, Chen's voice crackled over the comms, the grin of an eager gamer replaced by a grim line on his face. Give me time. Time, Anya echoed. That's what we buy, no matter the cost. She turned to Valara, whose antennae twitched with a mixture of dread and a strange determination. You promise never again, Anya reminded him, her voice low. And my world will honor that promise, Valara met her gaze unflinchingly. Not with shields and speeches this time, but the iron you taught us. The first reports filtered in. Outpost skirmishes, border patrols shot down with chilling precision. Anya moved markers across the tactical map, her stomach a cold knot. It's different, Tora's voice, roughened by battlefield medicine, echoed over the comms. They're not driving civilians into kill zones like they used to. It's surgical, targeting infrastructure, supply lines. Not breaking our spirit, Anya realized aloud. They're crippling our ability to fight back. They remember. Kaiden's voice, filtering through Anya's private channel, was devoid of his usual bravado. They remember the railguns, the ambushes. They're forcing us to spread thin while they isolate and destroy. And we must play their game, Anya replied tightly. New tactics, Kaiden. We strike small and vanish. Make them as paranoid as we are. She saw it on the casualty reports, now not just the fallen but the missing squads, swallowed by uncharted sectors as human hunters became the hunted once again. Anya's stomach churned, her old lectures on attrition warfare, now a nightmare made real. Valara placed a scaled hand on her shoulder, a silent offer of support she barely registered. The Confederation holds, he said, unwavering confidence in his voice surprising Anya. Our new kinetic fleets are inflicting losses, Less elegant victories, yes, but victories nonetheless. 
a flicker on the tactical map caught her eye. An unexpected energy surged deep within enemy territory. Chen, what is that? Anya demanded. Ma'am, I don't know. Chen's usual cocky tone was gone. It's massive, drawing power from their whole fleet, and it's aimed at Rylax. The name hung in the air like a death sentence. Rylax where the war had turned, where Tira was stationed, the countless civilians who now called it home. Evacuation? Anya's voice was barely a whisper. Impossible, Bellara stated, his scales paling. They've blockaded the system. That energy, it's not just a weapon. We need to know what they're targeting. Perhaps we can. No time, Anya cut him off. The decision a bitter pill. Kaiden, your unit is the closest. Get to Rylax, groundside. Find out what they're aiming at. Disrupt them, by any means necessary. She heard Kaiden's sharp intake of breath, knew what she was asking of him. To be dropped into the heart of a hornet's nest, it was a suicide mission, a throwback to the most desperate days of the old war. Rylax was a city under siege, not the chaos of the first battle, but a cold, calculated stranglehold. Enemy ships swarmed the sky, not cloaked, but brazen in their dominance. Anya saw it in the faces of the civilians, not terror, but a chilling resignation. The enemy had learned, not just in battle tactics, but in the cruel art of breaking hope. Kaiden's face, appearing in a shaky calm transmission, was grimy, etched deeper with age than years should allow. We're in position, Commander. Cities half deserted, fear's done its work. Report, Anya said, forcing her voice to remain steady. They're not targeting population centers this time, Kaiden replied surveying the cityscape through a cracked videoscope. It's the industrial sector, evacuation depots, and, his breath hitched, the academy. Anya closed her eyes. So many young faces flashed through her mind. The eager cadet she'd seen triumph in the boot camp, Tira, perhaps, now a seasoned officer. They were all targets. Their goal, Valara's voice was thick with dawning horror. They don't seek to destroy Rylax, they want to destroy our future. Kaiden, Anya forced the words out. You know your orders. Do whatever it takes. There was no hesitation in the sergeant's reply, only a tired acceptance. We will, Commander. For the fallen, and for those bug-eyed bastards in basic training who still think wars about shiny metals. He paused, then added, Kaiden out. The transmission winked out, leaving Anya staring at a blank screen. This was the price of being the protector. Sometimes, the only choice was who to sacrifice. She turned her attention to the war room, the desperate symphony of reports. A Confederation battle group cornered outmatched, but spitting defiance. A feint towards an uninhabited planet, drawing enemy forces thin, allowing a supply convoy to slip through. All small, hard-won victories, bought in human blood. This wasn't a war of glorious charges or brilliant plans. This was endurance, the thousand tiny cuts that bled an empire dry. This was the legacy humanity had carved out in the galaxy. Days blurred into a ceaseless haze of brutal reports. For every enemy ship downed, two humans perished on some unnamed moon. Yet, Anya sensed a shift. The enemy's advance slowed, their strikes becoming less surgical, more frantic. Then, a transmission crackled through, filled not with terror, but a raw, savage triumph. Commander, it was Chen, his voice hoarse, we've cracked their scrambler, targeting's back online, and we're feeding them false coordinates. It's working, they're firing blind. Anya surged to her feet, hope flaring for the first time in weeks. Valara mobilized the fleets, concentrated fire on the command ship. Their eyes are gone. We strike at the head. It wasn't the clean victory the Confederation dreamed of, but a brawl in the dark. Ships careened, not through masterful strategy, but a desperate gamble. Kinetic warheads ripped into vulnerable hulls exposed by misdirected defenses. Anya's stomach churned for every enemy vessel destroyed. She knew a dozen Confederation ships would fall too. And amidst the chaos, Sergeant Kaiden's voice cut through, not with a report, but a choked cry. Commander, they've powered down the weapon. It, 
It wasn't aimed at the Academy. It was a trap. Anya's hand froze on the tactical console. The trap, a feint to lure her best soldiers into a massacre. The brutal realization washed over her. They hadn't just learned to counter shields, learned to cripple supply lines. They had learned to think like her. Commander, Valara's voice a hiss. The enemy command ship, it's retreating. We can pursue, break their line entirely. Anya closed her eyes. She saw Kaiden's weary troop, saw Terra, perhaps bloodied but alive, saw the fresh-faced recruits who'd survived not through valor, but because their enemy had underestimated the human hunger for vengeance. No, Anya's voice was barely a whisper, raw with the strain of command. Hold position. Let them run. Rylax, in the aftermath, wasn't a place of banners and cheers. Anya walked streets strewn with rubble, past makeshift hospitals and hastily dug graves. Survivors emerged from the shadows, their faces hollow, their eyes mirroring her own haunted exhaustion. She found Kaiden in the ruins of the academy, sitting amidst the wreckage. The ever-stoic sergeant was hunched over, his face buried in his hands. She didn't offer platitudes, just sat beside him in the shared silence of loss. It never gets easier, he muttered, finally looking up. The lines on his face carved deeper than ever. It changes, Anya said, finding a strange echo of the argument she'd had long ago on another battlefield. From unbearable pain to a weight you just get used to carrying. In a clearing where recruits once learned parade drills, she saw Tira, still in the mud-stained uniform. The young Trillian officer moved among the wounded, not with the wide-eyed determination of the past, but with the grim efficiency of a war veteran. Tyran noticed her approach and straightened. Anya expected a salute, a plea for reinforcements, a thousand possible responses. Instead, Tyra simply stated, They will return, Commander. It wasn't fear in the Trillian's eyes, nor hatred. It was a cold resolve. I know, Anya replied. In that moment, Anya understood her true victory wasn't on some tactical map. But here, in a shared understanding, humanity had not given the Confederation a thirst for battle, but an unshakable will to fight back. She left Rylax that evening, the shuttle taking her back to the Harmony and the endless strategizing. The war was far from over, yet as she gazed down at the scarred planet, she felt not despair, but a strange, almost defiant sense of purpose. Years turned into decades, the war that was meant to last months bled into a generation. Anya Soria, now less commander and more living legend whispered in awe and fear, moved from war room to council chamber, from newly terraformed colonies to the grand halls of the Confederation itself. The speeches weren't as satisfying as action, the bureaucracy a maddening beast compared to the grim simplicity of battle. But Anya, guided by the ghosts of Kaiden fallen in some nameless skirmish, of Tora's loss to a disease no battlefield medic could cure, of Chen his brilliance extinguished in a blinding flash, had learned to fight a different war. She fought for more than survival now. She fought for the young human cadet who looked at a railgun with revulsion and dared to ask, must it always be like this? She fought for the aging Zillaton admiral, scales dulled with grief, who quietly admitted, we were children, once, playing at war. And Anya, who never wanted this burden, who longed for a world where her kind were admired for art, not blood, would look them in the eye and say, not always, but long enough for the rest of you to learn. The changes were agonizingly slow. Border worlds fortified not with illusionary shields, but bunkers of grim practicality. Fleets patrolled not for show, but with the weary vigilance of hunters, and in the academies, alongside the strategy and the tech. A new course was mandatory, the human condition, a brutal, uncensored history of their own rise to galactic prominence. Were they creating better warriors, or simply more scarred ones? Anya wrestled with the questions late at night. Then, an image would flash the defiant tilt of Tira's chin, a new generation of leaders forged not in peace, but in the crucible of constant war, and a grim satisfaction echoed in her, at least they'd have a fighting chance. Anya Soria, once a lecturer on history, now lived it. History not of triumph, of empires built, 
but of a burden shared, of allies finally understanding they must shoulder their share. Perhaps, one day, that burden might be set down. Until then, humanity and all the changed species would stand watch. And if the enemy from the shadows ever dared to return, they would face a galaxy no longer asleep, no longer blind. But most importantly, a galaxy finally, truly, unafraid,